it is abundantly cool to see all the new cigars, all the people really excited about the new brands and projects and blends that are coming out. Like, even people are investing in new booths right now and like, the fact that the FDA was gonna knock down the ability to put out new cigars meant that a lot of people were really nervous about spending money. If you're not sure if your brand is even gonna be able to stay on the shelf at cigar shops across America, you're not gonna spend a ton of money on like a new booth or anything like that. But now people are reinvesting in like, look at EP Korea's booth here. All kinds of new stuff. New cigars, new packaging, new products, sexy new humidors. I wanna see if Nestor is here. What is that? The Placencia Cosecha 151? That's a cigar I want to get a hold of. All right, let's see if we can find Nestor. I think I see him. Of course you can't have a PCA without saying hi to Nestor Placencia from Placencia Cigars. And especially this year, brother. Amazing. This year, it's a, it's a show's amazing. It is amazing. A lot of people having fun, having uh, people that come to celebrate life with, a, with amazing cigars. So thank you for being here. And you guys have a show buster. Yes. The Cosecha 151. Cosecha 151, 100% Honduran Puro, out of our crop 2016, 2017. So this is an amazing cigar. So you guys have had the Cosecha 146? 146, that so is one, go, that's going out. It's going to go away. And that's the 149, which will is still here for a while. Yes, for a while. And then the Cosecha 151 is coming. This is coming, so you have to try it. It's amazing. 100% Honduran Puro. We want to have Honduran that you know what Honduras have to offer for cigars. For Everybody's cigars. like Nicaragua, Nicaragua, Nicaragua. Yes. Which is good. And Nicaragua yes, amazing, great. amazing cigars out of Nicaragua. Honduras has very interesting character. And I tell you guys this in other videos, but the, the Cosecha 146 and 149, they show you the versatility also of Honduran tobacco. Yes. Everyone always says Honduran leaf is so earthy and it doesn't have to be. It can ah, be powerful. If you, can, if you can harvest the way that have to be harvested, you can ferment it the way they have to be fermented, and if you give it to the artist so they can make amazing blends with the product that you, that you grow. So we are 100% vertical integrated. We control the quality since the seeds to the final leaf to the final product for you guys for enjoyment. It's amazing. All right, I can't wait to get this cigar in my hands. I suspect, can I smoke one of these while of I'm course. here? Oh, this is for you. Look at that, I got one right now. I'm gonna smoke it while I'm here. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna mill around the booth and I actually have to go spend some money while I'm here uh, with my rep. So That's thank great. you again, Nestor. Thank you, guys. Thank you for enjoying cigars. Appreciate it. Now, among all this talk about brand new cigars and new stuff that's coming out, there's one thing I have to physically witness with my own eyes to even believe it, and that is Aganorsa's 10 by 100 cigar. So Terrence Riley looks like he's in a meeting, a very important meeting with very important people, so I don't want to distract him. I'm just going to stroll here and see if I can find it. Okay, so Lunatic, it's a Lunatic. So Lunatic's already ridiculously big. Take a look at these monstrosities down here. All right, there's already big ones. What is that? Five and a half by 80, four and three quarters by 70. Those are big, really big. Oh, look, there's a new anniversary on Maduro. Nice, okay. Let's keep looking around here. There is Rare Leaf Reserve, okay. The new Rare Leaf Reserve Maduro, that's fine. The Aganorsa Corojo, the Anniversario Corojo, I already have that. Have that. Have that. Oh, here it is. Look at this thing. I am here with Terrence Riley from Aganorsa Leaf, for whom I have one question. Sir, what the actual f is this obscenity here? It's like a baby's arm. I mean, how do you... Baby's leg. A baby's leg. Yeah. All right, dude. Tell me about 10 by 100. Well, there's an old philosophical question. So, now, why? And the answer is, why not? Why not? Why not? That's fair. Just so you guys know, before I come to these shows, I always put in my purchase orders before I come, 
kind of want to be at the front of the line, but I want to make sure that I get the newest products first. I got an obscene number of these. And, yeah, it's almost obscene as the size. It's almost as obscene as the size, because I know that you guys are going to want them. Something that I will never really fully grasp, but I just got to say here that now holding it, I feel the weight of the craziness of this cigar. Each one of these is a full tobacco plant. <laughs> oh my god! That's not true, but it sounds good. It sounds it? really good yeah, when yeah, you yeah, say yeah. it that way. That's amazing. <laughs> all right, what's the wrapper on it? So it's uh, San Andres Maduro, and then it's all all of Nicaraguan uh, fillers and binders. It's the same blend as the as the Lunatic, only in a, a you know it makes the eighty look like you know like a baby, like, like a, a baby. Yeah, like a Corona. Yeah. yeah, the 8x80 is now, it looks like a Corona. The 8x80 is a Corona, and this is Dad who's been drinking beers for 10 years. Yeah, and he's hanging. maybe 20. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, there's the 10 by 100 I, it's, it, I, I'm it's, here to behold it, and I feel like I've gotten that Are you going to smoke it? I, I am. In fact, everybody at the shop has plans to smoke this cigar. They all saw it come out, and they were like, we're going to have to smoke that, aren't we? It took me five minutes to get it fully lit. I mean, I, I, I think I used like a container of butane. All right. There's a lot of lunatics out there. That's all I can say. And, sure we're, and, we're, and we're two of them. We're two of them. And now I'm going to see if I can get a hold of Nick Molila while I'm smoking the new Pulpetta, which should be hitting the boxes and the shelves in a couple of months here. I'm excited about that. Or soon. I don't know. I don't remember when anything's going to ship anymore. And that's become a, quite a point of stress for me because I've just invested so much in it. And now i got to kind of get a hold of ship dates. But we got to see if Nick... Oh, yeah, I see his beautiful face. Nick Melillo in the foundation booth. So I'm editing this video right now, and there's two things I wanted to point out about the interview with Nick Malila that's about to come up. Number one, there was a lot of background noise, so I really tried to process the audio to try to get it as sort of audible as I could because the interview is so good. He's always got such good input. Number two, the Matapa that I'm smoking right now, he says that this is the first Ecuador Sumatra blend that he's released to the public. So like if you're a big Foundation fan and you're like, oh, what, what cigars has Nick released not to the public that might have an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper on them? Well, you might wonder what other cigar has this wrapper on it. I don't know. I, I don't want to speculate here, but of course I've got one in mind. Here's the interview. Here it is. Dude, come yeah. on, you are. Dude. You're killing me. I'm having fun. And, and that's what it's all about. I get about. to hang out with you and I get to do your cigars and you I got want just good energy. You got a great aura, good yeah. energy, not to get weird. It was because when I was growing up, my mom told me it was so special. That's, that's a reading true. rainbow generation, bro. That's true. That's awesome. That's where I got it from my mom, too. Yeah, dude. She was always that happy, went through crazy times. Dude, was your, were, did your parents, what was it like when you went into tobacco with your parents? Were like, they cool? My father bought me a diamond crown for my high school graduation. No way. But I had it still. I didn't drink. I wasn't into drugs. I was doing well in school. My grandfather smoked cigars. So they were like, you really love cigars? We're going to be cool with this. Even though with my mom. So your parents are like proud of this. They love everything. everything about it. So I went to school to be a pastor. And when I went from ministry into tobacco, my parents were not excited about that. <laughs> they paid for my degree. And I was like, you know what, dude? I think I'm going to do tobacco for a while. And they were like, oh, the devil's rich. The And in terms of culture and history, you seem to know more than most people about this stuff because I have to own my own library of history books just to understand the depth and complexity behind the name of every cigar in your catalog. It's interesting because my love for cigars coincides with my journey of opening up your culture and history and knowledge. So it was happening at the same time. So I was sort of into school but not really into school. And then I started learning outside of school. And, you know, Ethiopia was really the beginning of that. Yes. I grew up just learning about Ethiopia and most people think it's a starvation family. Yep. And then I learned that this is really not the case. 3,000 years of history, so I was like, why do I just know, why don't I know the origins of 
Oh, our conversation about scriptures can be so good. Well, because the so scripture much starts up. in Ethiopia. Genesis 2.13 describes the garden. It was in the English class. We were reading scripture as literature. Not as yeah. a religious yeah. text. Yeah. So I read that part about Genesis. And then a customer in the cigar shop brought in some article from National Geographic that they found all of the bones in Ethiopia. So I'm like... This is a scientific magazine, and then you have a, a religious. What's going on? They're yeah. both saying the same thing. That was all. That was it. That opened. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, I got deep into. I started seeing everything connected. There was nothing was going on. It was nothing was separated. Internet of things. Everything was connected because we all have one common roots. We all come from, we all now through our mitochondrial DNA, our mother's DNA, traced it to the So we have all of this, we have one common ancestry, but nobody, yeah. it's not taught, it's not seen. And there, you know what? People, maybe people don't want us to be united. Then maybe not. Yeah. yeah. I sort of get that sense as yes. I look around today. Yes. Now, if I go through your catalog of cigars, yes. there is a lot of the history, a lot of the really rich parts of history there. Yes. Now this year you've got three new ones. Yes. Okay, so yes. and I want to dive into these and yes. get the Polaroid yes. snapshot of these. Yes. So where do we start? I got Knights Commander. I mean, I think we should start here based on the conversation. So we just learned about this, my whole love for Ethiopia. Three years ago, the Ethiopian Crown Council was in exile in Washington DC. They knighted with the star of Ethiopia, which goes back to the 1800s. I saw your pictures gave, online of you getting night. They gave me the title of Night Commander. So I wanted to do something really special in the Tabernacle Night. Night Commander 6 and 3 quarters by 52 in fact of He's been aging in Nicaragua for 15 months. Wow. So broadleaf, but the best of the best fillers, binders, aging for 15 months. I think uh, it's hard to put completely into words what this product means. I bet, yeah, man. Yeah, 12 count box. Um, and then where? Um, where do we so, go? so I'm going to do Charter Oak because this is another limited quarterly release. Okay. This is a special Charter Oak using uh, a Connecticut broadleaf and a Connecticut shade. Five and a half by three eight, 12 count box. These are both in the name of my grandfathers. Yes. So Pasquale is my yeah, grandfather. I've been wondering how to say it. I've been saying it in Pasquale. videos wrong. Yes. I've been saying it wrong. Pasquale. Pasquale. And but they call him Pasquale. Pasquale. Pasquale is the right name. Okay. Name. Yes. And the other one? Pegnatero. Pegnatero. That was my other grandfather. Okay. He loved Connecticut shape. I, I so I get this is the typical size of Connecticut cigars. They're always five and a half by four to eight. Soft box for us, 12 pound box. Completely different blend than Core by Chonro. All right. Completely different blend except for the wrappers. Okay? Nice. Yes. But these are the hair is kind of rich. There's a lot more complexity, a lot more depth. The charter oak is your everyday. Yeah. This is your something special. This is what they would smoke on, you know, a birthday, a special occasion, special. I haven't said this yet on the channel because I'm searching for like the perfect cigar, and I, and I, I, maybe this is it. Yeah. Maybe this is it because I just found out it's a, for a special occasion. I'm going to be a grandpa. Dude, my, my baby's having a baby. My oldest daughter is 24 years old. Oh, awesome. And she's going to have a kid. Congratulations. This is probably that cigar, yeah, bro. I your one. grandfather's. Bro, that's what's up. You too young to be your grandfather. I am too young. I asked her to let me, I asked her to wait until I was 40, and she didn't wait until I was 40. <laughs> I'm 38. I'm Yeah. All right. Congratulations. I got myself a grandfather's day. This comes out before January, right? Yes. Okay, yes. Good. Fall. All this is going to be uh, fall. All right. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Matapa. Matapa. Matapa is the name of the city southwest of Italy where Ruben Dario, the gentleman of this industry, was born. Ruben Dario is one of the most famous Spanish poets. He changed Spanish poetry in the early 1900s. 
Americans who become one of the Nicaraguans, the most known heroes. His imagery is iconic in, in Nicaraguan. This, this, this portrait of him. Yeah, which really had kind of a kind of Bolivar kind of influence of just seeing him, you know, starting the Bolivar similar to something like this. I would love to make a play of I'm surprised no one ever used his imagery before. I never did a Sumatra Ecuador play. And that was released to the public. Yeah. Uh, this is my first Sumatra Ecuador. Sumatra Ecuador very Rapper to that. Sumatra, alone in Ecuador, he has somewhat of a kind of good bitterness to it, but I end up rounding that out for the Connecticut Club. Nice. So, the arrows from the SD and the Alabama. So, the thing is full. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I gotta try it. Right. It's really rich, full. Yeah, you know, so this is very unique. The rapper kind of drives the whole All right, guys. Nick Malilo, the king of broadleaf, the sultan of spice, the boss. I, I could come up with a million of them for you. Yeah, dude. You guys, you're going to look for all of Foundation's new stuff coming out through now to the end of the year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, we should start shipping these probably September. All right, watch for it, guys. It's going to be a powerful year, and thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What a trade show. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack and my mind is spinning with all the new projects that are going on and everything that's coming out. The great news is that means so much new flavor to sink your teeth into, so many new reviews to do, and so many new ways to think about the blend. And I've seen a lot of guys doing really interesting and even some like really daring stuff this year, but I got my bag, my bag's got goodies in it, and goodies that quite frankly, I didn't think I was going to get at this trade show. I got, I got some great cigars to smoke stuff that I thought I wouldn't even get to smoke until like September. So uh, I'm gonna take this back to my room and I'll unwind with you guys there. of war this is the the swag bag all right so i want to take you guys inside of this i don't, I don't know if i mentioned in this video but this re these releases will start now the new cigars will start coming out now and they'll go all the way through the end of the year and so this is one of the things that drives me nuts because i'm literally bargaining and budgeting and and placing orders based on stuff that will ship over the next six months uh like Steve Saka's unicorns. Those aren't gonna come out until like December or January, but okay. I put a little bit in from this video with Nick, but I got myself an Olmec Habano, which seems to be a little misshapen at this point. Uh, for sure, the Matapa, okay? I And I'm really excited to try this because of what it means and uh, the like the history behind it and the blend. The blend sounds really interesting and amazing as I'm sure it will be, like Nick Malila always crushes it with these. Uh, but probably the thing that that I'm the most excited about is the Pasquale, which I now know how to pronounce, and the Pegnataro. Uh, these two Charter Oak cigars uh, about this, and and I told him that I've told him something I haven't talked about on the channel a lot lately, and probably still do a big announcement and a big reveal since not that many people are going to know about it, even if I put it in this video. And that's that I'm going to be a grandpa next year. I'm going to have a grandbaby. My baby's having a baby. So I have a little granddaughter sometime in January or February. And I've been thinking about this now for the last uh, couple of months. Like, what the hell am I going to smoke for what has easily got to be one of the greatest special occasions left coming my way in life? Like, you know, having the first house, done that. Like, you, you know, have the kids, done that. Got married, did that. Already done that. Like all the big things that are really like huge special occasions I've done, this is like one of the like really huge moments in life when I have a grandbaby. And then Nick Malilo comes out with these two Charter Oaks 
named after his grandfathers. And I was like, bro, this has got to be one of the cigars I smoke to celebrate. Uh, I'm excited to try these two Charter Oaks. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's just because of how much I love the Charter Oak as a daily smoke. Um, but these two seem like top notch to me. I'm probably going to be smoking some of this stuff on the drive home back to Phoenix. Next up on the, on the chopping block, Placencia. So... Placencia this year's got two new releases, and uh, we saw one of them uh, with Nestor, and that was the Cosecha 151. And I, you know, it's interesting with this stuff. I did not know that these were all like limited edition, that once the crop was gone, the cigar would be gone. Uh, I sort of figured it was like when I pictured crop, I mean, thought maybe it was a field and they would keep growing that crop, but I'm also not a farmer, so I don't know how this stuff works. So the Cosecha 151 is on its way. The Cosecha 146 is now going to go away. That'll be gone. I'm told that the 149, the popular, very dark one that's out now, that, that one they've got supply enough to last for a couple, two, three more years. So that should be around for a little while. Thank God. It's like my favorite Placencia cigar right now. Outside of maybe the Cosecha 151. Also, Nestor told me that this is not what it's going to look like. Like, it looks like a looks like a road sign for like a warning that something is coming. This is, uh, but they, they printed off some bands just so they'd have a presentation ready for the show because the bands that are going to go on this cigar are not ready. And I think on those bands, the yellow is a gold foil yellow. So I think that will be, I mean, obviously it'll class the cigar up about 10 levels. Then they're asking you guys to spend like 13 bucks a stick on these. So uh, and I, and by the way, well worth it for all the cosechas. And then the other one that, that they did that we didn't really talk about when Nestor was there is the, uh, the Alma Fuerte natural in a Robusto size, which I'm very excited about. You know, there's a temptation for me to try to go to them and say, Hey, can I get a lot of boxes of this? Like bunches and bunches of boxes so I can do like a special feature on the channel with you guys and like have a bunch of it around. But uh, this stuff has been in really, really high demand, really rare supply over the last few years. So I'm doubting I'm going to get a tremendous amount of this. Although I did order a tremendous amount of it. So I'm sure it'll all go in back order and I'll get it over the course of several months. Aganor Salif. I didn't get a 10 by 100. I did not take one of those with me. Terrence offered for me to smoke one while walking around the show. And I said, absolutely not. I don't endorse that. I mean, I'm going to by making a video on it at some point, but certainly not walk around this trade show. But Aganor Salif Anniversario, Connecticut, this cigar right here, uh, that's one I'm really looking forward to because their Anniversarios have just been so spot on for the these box press blends, have been so spot on for like complexity and balance of flavor uh, that I'm really excited for Connecticut. I see more companies working harder to put out Connecticut's that aren't just ho-hum Connecticut's like stuff with real presence of flavor. I smoked a brulee this morning and that was like, that has always been a powerhouse Connecticut. And even before the brulee was out, the, the Rose of Sharon from Southern Dry, I think predated even that. And that was a stellar Connecticut. Now, in order to put a Connecticut out, it really, really has to bang. And so uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the Aganorsa Anniversario for that. Okay, so I went by and saw Rick Rodriguez who gave me a, what appears to be a... West Tampa White and maybe a Lancero size. Or maybe that's something he's doing. And then this is an Attic series uh, that's box pressed. So I he gave it to me like, bro, like, bro, this is going to be amazing. So I'm assuming this is going to be like a new big project. I have to set aside some time when I can like have my palate well rested and dive into a box pressed Attic series to see what that, like how different it is from the traditional Attic series. That's my haul from the show. And it's not like a ton of stuff. And Jim and I only went for one day. But I was so encouraged at this one. Like, I was I was really happy to see my cigar maker friends uh, who seemed excited, energized, because I've seen recent years where, we, where everybody sort of seemed stressed and sort of cut close to the bone and worn out. And so, you know, there's like, energy flying around the room everybody's excited talking happy it was it's the way i i don't remember 
stuff in cigars being this way since maybe 2019, right? Before everything happened. So I'm excited for my cigar maker friends. I'm excited for the cigar industry and, and what this means for this next year. It's really incredible new projects and, and, and well done projects. Like you can tell when something just sort of seems rushed to market. And a lot of this stuff seems like there's been a lot of really solid thought put behind it. Not just the blending, but every, every piece of it. So, um, you guys watch out for more videos on these. Got my day of relaxation, ate way too much food, and had an absolute blast here. And I met AJ Fernandez last night, by the way. I was at dinner and uh, Laurel Tilly came over to my table. She was like on her way to the bathroom and she was like, what's up? And then uh, they brought AJ over to my table to meet me, which felt like a really cool honor. I was like, hi, AJ. Oh my gosh, it's AJ. And he was just uh, spoke to us through uh, through translator for a second, said what's up, and what a cool guy, you know. Uh, this is such a great industry. I love premium cigars, and like I said about the trade show, this is really what it is. The trade show really is this is the cigar lounge. It's the huge cigar lounge. You got every different type of person represented there. I mean, absolutely everybody represented there. I mean, it doesn't matter what what cross section of life you want to pull from. That person is there at this trade show getting along with somebody that, that you might not normally see him getting along with. And everybody's got the same damn passion for the blends and the, and the tobacco and the, like the flavor that you get from this in the community. So anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate you hanging with me for this video. I'm going to try to make this as bite-sized and concise as I can. I got a lot of work to do on it because there was so much good content this year, but drop a comment down below. What's the new project that's coming up that you're really excited about? Or have you already had something that you just can't stop sinking your teeth into? Put that down below. And of course, check this video out on Cigars Daily Plus. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily. And I will see you in the comments.